Hey folks, this is Sarabjit here at Mobile World Congress. I'm sitting here with VMware CTO, Kid Over, and uh, we're gonna refer to some couple of things like what VMware has announced during Mobile World Congress, and they have been working on this for, for a few quarters and years on this, what they are showcasing here right now, and what's coming down the pike a little bit about that. Hey Kid, welcome. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so what are the big news here you are announcing and where we are taking the telcos with the virtualization if you will. Yeah. So one of the big focus areas, but well, first of all a lot of announcements. Probably too many to talk about in the short time we have together. But you know a big focus obviously on the whole open RAN, ORAN space. Yeah. Uh, analysis with Samsung, analysis with NTT. Really working together with them uh, to help drive the state of the art in, in ORAN forward. We really see ourselves providing a platform uh, that can support a lot of this sort of innovation. And so we're really excited working together with these partners uh, to drive that. Yeah, I saw some um, open RAN demos from a company which just, just does the testing on ORAN. It's amazing how everything is getting virtualized and yep. the, the hardware switches are becoming, the software switches, the, even the antennas are becoming hard, hardware antennas are becoming software antennas, they told me. So, uh, so <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, I mean, like, you still need hardware eventually, right? You can't have software running just on software. It's got to be hardware somewhere. But I think the reality is that so much of the hardware that we've used historically has actually been hardware appliances that have software inside of them. Yeah. And, but the two have been sort of tightly tangled yeah. together. So what I see with the evolution here happening is really more cleanly separating that out, um, allowing multiple software layers to live on top of a single hardware layer, yeah. and allowing much more um, innovation, interoperability in that software layer. And I think that's where you get a lot of the, the real innovation coming from is that once you have that software layer, you can iterate much, much faster. Yeah, that, that's great actually, which have, we have been doing on the cloud side and enterprise application sort of stacks for a long time and then yep. we want to bring that sort of agility, if you will. Yeah. The velocity is the actually the, the theme of this yeah. event, <laughs> it right? Is, yeah. So it, it brings that velocity uh, to telcos as well. Um, what, what's the developer angle, actually? I, I believe that there's a lot less innovation happening on, in telco space because telcos always actually, um, we always kind of make fun of them in many ways, <laughs> but the like, telcos miss so many boats, right? And we don't want them to miss the IoT and edge boat, right? Yeah. So, and I think this gives them opportunity. On that note, I want to um, talk briefly about the role of the developers, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So I, I think, well, and it depends on what uh, which developers yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But let me just say a few things. So um, on your point in, in terms of telco, I mean, what's happened is that I think where historically telcos sort of missed, you start talking about the, like missing the trend, missing the boat, is that they didn't establish um, a, a real cleanly defined API. Yeah. And so people sort of built systems on top of that that had the APIs. And I think a lot of those higher level systems have, like, have captured a lot of the value, sort of the, the higher level value over time. What we see now with the move to 5G, with the focus on edge, with things like IoT, yeah. is we do see a lot of the telco industry starting to broadly embrace APIs at all levels. Yeah. And so I think what a lot of you are seeing with ORAN in, or virtualized RAN in general is that, okay, there's now kind of more cloud-like APIs that are there. Yeah. So, that, that, so then you start getting this like layering effect where you've got developers that work for vendors, ISVs, what have you, they can sort of build on top of those. And then you have uh, application developers. Yeah. They can start leveraging those APIs as well. And that's where I think it starts getting really interesting because these APIs can offer a lot more capabilities and values than have traditionally been there. So like for instance, right, you look at things like a content delivery network, a CDN, yeah. and those had to be built 
without using almost any APIs of the underlying telco. You kind of just had to do everything yourself. You had to figure out location, all this stuff. But as the underlying network gets smarter, as it opens up those APIs, you can imagine a CDN, that kind of functionality being built more into the actual fabric of the network, thus making any sort of application much simpler. You can say, hey, I need this data here, and the network will sort of figure out how to make that happen. So um, it really is about up-leveling the abstractions that developers can interact with. Yeah, actually, I think with the, that abstraction and having the APIs, it helps us democratize access to, yes. to develop. Like, for example, what Cloud did was, like, it gave the same access to somebody from sitting in a small village in Africa or India, yep. same yep. access to what we are sitting in Silicon Valley have. Yep. So it sort of neutralizes that. So there's a lot of a lot of, a lot of innovation comes from all over the world. Uh, I think that's a that's a great sign. And 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 I have I talk about a concept called skills gravity. Skills have gravity, and a lot of people are trained on a lot of technologies from incumbents and from vendors which have been there for 15, 20 years. Yeah. VMware is one of them. And then a lot of VMware practitioners with certification, they can leverage those skills going forward into telcos, into healthcare, into the, because IoT is very pervasive in yep. all those industries, yep. in mobility and cars and trucks and whatnot, right? Yeah. So I think it, it works to the to the benefit of the customers of the enterprises as well as uh, vendors like you guys, right? No, it's a great point. And I think uh, that's the other part of this. Um, how do we bring a lot of these APIs in the telco space to the point where someone who is versed with VMware, vSphere, or AWS, or some of these other sort of cloud data center technologies, yeah. such that they can more easily onboard, start taking advantage of these things. So that, I think you're absolutely right. We want to make it as easy as possible for folks with these data center and cloud skills to leverage these newer interfaces. That great. With that, actually, I, I, I will let you go now because if you're busy here, you <laughs> just landed here today. So thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, our, we'll wrap up here. And I will be talking to a few other VM folks here and uh, recording some sort of demos. And I, I like the demo of the Intel and Tesla. You have showing oh, Tesla yes, with yeah, the police. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, there's a whole network. Yeah, of the yeah. That's a really cool use case, actually, and uh, it's been amazing to see the value that they've gotten out of that. Yeah, it's, you, you will see that on the streets of the UK, that, that technology is being used by the police in the UK, right? Yep. So yep. That's, that's amazing. So, yeah, yeah. The, whole, the whole digital forensic space, I think, is, is ripe with opportunity. Yeah. Um, this is another area where I think, you know, you look at a lot of the governments, uh, police departments, etc., they've been a little bit behind the eight ball, and how do they adopt all this technology and do so in a way that is secure, but also reliable. Yeah. And in the end, helps both the officers doing investigations, as well as, as the victims or witnesses. Because sometimes, you know, they have to take your, your phone or whatever it is to, to download the data off of it. That yeah. can really, really uh, put you out, but they can just do it right there without you having to leave uh, or take the device. It's really powerful. That's really powerful. I, I think they improves the economics of the smaller entities, the does, city yeah. governments and the county governments, of province governments, depending on which country you are in, <laughs> yeah. districts, right? So they, those, those governments have like limited budgets and, and limited teams to, to make these technologies operational. So great. Thank you very cool. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks.